what's going on y'all welcome to meat cranium barbecue and review today i'm going to be testing out the titan great outdoors 36 inch reverse flow offset smoker well the review probably didn't go too good let's see how it cooks i've done a few things to this uh before this cook things that probably should have been done already but they weren't all right, so before I get the coals on and everything else, I cover this grade right here with uh, some foil. I punch, punch the hole right here. That's to drain down into the tube down there, into the grease. I cover the bottom rack right here with some foil. And then right here, I took a stone right here, put a stone back there too. And I uh, took the racks out of my Oklahoma Joe Highland Smoker. I have two of them. I have one going this way. I have another one going this way. So it gives these small little uh, crosshatch patterns right here. Then this coal is just from, from my last burn right here. I'm about to put some love charcoal on here and put some logs on there and get this get a nice uh, roaring fire going in here so now the airflow should come through here and it should it should just kiss the top of the coals and go out and circulate inside here and then go up inside the uh, the chamber of the smoker that's what I want to see before just laying down on the bare on the bare metal and I don't think it was getting very good airflow this way it's gonna get maximum airflow let's get started All right, y'all, well, the pit is at about 226 right now, uh, 234. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get the ribs on. Um, I'm not going to wait around for nothing. So, anyhow, I haven't taken the membranes off here. I just got done washing my ribs. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove the membranes. Get your spoon up underneath the membrane here, the bone. I use the back of a spoon, it seems to be a lot easier. These are some St. Louis ribs. For a binder, I'm using nothing. Just the water I washed them off with. That's all I'm using. All right, so on, on one uh, set of ribs, I'm gonna be using some celery seed right here. Uh, celery seed is supposed to uh, make a more pronounced uh, smoke ring on your meat. So one of them, I'm going to use celery seed. I'm gonna put the celery seed on first. Okay, I'm gonna do a two layer approach on here. I'm gonna use some Burberry. Got this from a, from, from a viewer. Thin layer that on here. Not gonna go crazy. I'll put that on both ribs. Only one set of ribs is gonna have celery seed on it. To give kind of like a nice base uh, flavor to it. Then our last base, of course I'm going with some, uh, it's incredible. Um, heaven made products, Tex, uh, Texas best rib rub. This stuff is absolutely freaking amazing. I love this stuff. All right, let's get these onto the pit. Okay, I'm gonna keep the uh, one with celery seed. Gonna keep that one in front. Keep the non-celery seed one in the back. Squish these up a little bit. Shut the pit. Now look, that's what I'm talking about, look. If you put your hand right here, you're gonna burn yourself. I can reach it way over here. I can set my tippy toes and then shut it. That is a total design flaw with this pit. And you also gotta take your lid, you gotta scooch it over to the side, and then you can shut it. All right, now all I gotta do is just monitor temperatures and colors. All I gotta do. It's uh, pretty much on cruise control now. Oh yeah, one other thing I did was uh, in this open area, I you know, just got two cans of water. That's it, just wanna share that with you. Okay, I'm about an hour into this cook, and I'll admit with some right now. I miss cooking like this. This is a lot of fun. You know, stoking the fire, and keep on adding a, a log to the fire every about every half hour, every 45 minutes. It is a lot of fun. I do miss it. I do love it. I do like it. Anyhow, um, I'm using uh, some hickory wood and I'm also using some pecan wood for this uh, cook today. And this is kind of how I have it set up. All right, here we go. Me cranium, you have the bark on your wood. Yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't take the bark off my wood unless I buy it like that, uh, especially pecan wood. Uh, this bark absolutely cooks up wonderful. I mean, it, that that's a good burning bark right there. So I don't waste none of that. I'll burn that just as right along with everything else. And I've never had any barbecue that's ever tasted sour or has ever tasted any other way. It's a piece of, of, of hickory wood. And I'm just keeping it right now. I'm just keeping it on the firebox here. So it's going to ignite a lot easier when I go to add it. So I got just some hickory wood and some pecan wood. Leave the bark on. It's really not going to make much of a difference, if a difference at all. I think it's just uh, one of those myth things that, that people have, and I, I, I don't see it. 
All right, it's about an hour in. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna spritz it. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but this is a water-themed barbecue. Water for a binder, water inside there, nothing special, just water in the cans. And I'm about to mist it, spray the ribs down with just some plain old water. Okay, look, 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 I stand to the side, then do it. Hey, pretty good color on these. There we go. Look at that. Okay, I just went to go shut the lid and look, came off the hinge. See that? That's what I'm talking about. Now I guess move it and then move it over to the side. All right, so what I have noticed about this pit so far is that it is maintain a temperature pretty good as long as you keep shoving a splits of wood in there. Every about every half hour, every 45 minutes, check the firebox, see if it's full of, uh, full of uh, wood, if it's ignited. So right now I think I have it tuned in right where I want to have it. And I got temperatures right about between 225 and 260. I've been kind of maintaining inside that little sweet spot. Will you look at that? The paint, the high heat temp paint they got on here, I guess. It should be high heat temp paint. It's bubbling off and blistering. Look at that crap. Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You can actually see it bubbling right in front of your eyes. Look at that. Wow. That is, uh, yeah, Titan. You gotta use a better paint on your product here. That is, that's a disappointment. Wow, that should not be happening. All right, so just hit the two hour mark. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz these things again. Um, I've had some spike of temps going up. Once again, there goes the lid. Just went to go shut it. The freaking lid came off right there. Got to dig it, slide it over, shut it. This handle's pretty hot too. I'm probably gonna start using my glove to do the handle. The handle's pretty damn hot. Yeah, it's two hour mark. I'm probably gonna just gonna take it off here in about another half hour and wrap it. And I have both dampers just cracked right there. I mean, just cracked barely. And it's uh, it's have, it's up into 300. So I'm gonna close this back down a little bit more. Okay, let's do what the uh, temperature swings look like inside this pit. So on the the side that's closest where the heat comes up and then circles back, back around is 253 over on that side. Over on this side at great level, it's right now it's at 304. So it's about 50 degrees difference. And then in the middle, the temp gauge on the middle is reading. It's showing right about 225. All righty, uh, two and a half hours later, I'm gonna check, uh, I'm gonna probe these things and see how they are. That's uh, still pretty, uh, still pretty tough inside. Well, the back's doing pretty good. We'll let these go about another 15 minutes. I'm gonna take them off and then I'll wrap them and I'm gonna be doing something special when I wrap these things. All right, it's 10 minutes later. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to wrap this stuff up. All right, so they got a beautiful color on them. Check these, check the color out of these things. Beautiful color, I like that color. That's real nice. That's what I'm talking about right there. Show you what I'm gonna do with these ribs today. So this is, Right here, it's got some chips of butter right here. Okay, this is gonna be the, uh, the one that has celery seed in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do some, uh, some brown sugar and butter on this one. Gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of water in here. No other juice, just water. Don't really need nothing else, just water. All right, now the one that doesn't have uh, celery seed on it. Now my wife, she does a, um, a roast and she puts pepperoncinis in it. It is really good. In fact, I'm gonna do uh, a smoked pork roast uh, for y'all one day. I'm gonna do it on here. And I'm gonna show y'all some. Take a couple pepperoncinis. There we go. Take some pepperoncini juice. I'm gonna keep those on there for about one hour. After one hour, gonna unwrap them, gonna put them in a sauce them up, that's it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the first ones off. This is the one with the butter and brown sugar. Gonna go ahead and just sauce these. Get a little bit of pullback on here, not a, not nothing crazy. Turn these back around, gonna go meat up. Got my blueberry barbecue sauce here, been heating it up on the side. Then this right here, is the, uh, the one I put the pepperoncinis in. I don't think I'm gonna add anything to these. I'm just gonna flip these over and let the uh, the meat side up so we can uh, get a crust on there again. Put it in the pepperoncinis, the pepperoncini sauce, and a little juice. All these things are getting real nice and tender. Yeah, feeling good. I think another hour for these, it'll be perfect. What? Yes, honey, another hour. Barbecue takes a while, perfection. Alrighty y'all, so the ribs are ready to come off now. So it's been a little over four hours. I'm ready to take these things off. 
All right, so I'm gonna let these rest for you know 10, 20 minutes. I'm gonna cut into them. It's starting to rain, so I'll probably finish this off inside the house. All right, this first set of ribs is the one that has blueberry barbecue sauce on it, and the one that I made um, uh, put some celery seed on. Not a lot of pullback on these. All right, let's see what the smoke ring looks like on this. See if uh, the celery seed did get a nice smoke ring on there. Yeah, it looks like a uh, nice, pretty nice, good, good size smoke ring on there. Not bad. Push that to the side. That's the one with blueberry barbecue sauce on it right there. Now it comes time for the peppercini ones. Never done it before. There we go. Ah, that's it. Yeah, the bones, bones turn. Right, there we go. Okay, then this right here got somewhat of a smoke ring. Not really pronounced. Not bad. Okay, this is one without celery seed in it. It's still got a smoke ring right there. Now let's give these things a try. Let's give the uh, blueberry rib a try here. Mmm. Look at that. Really nice bite through. Wow. That's super tasty. Now comes time for one I've never had before. A peppercini. Real nice smoke ring on there. Let's try this peppercini one. Wow. It actually has quite a bit of flavor right there. Surprisingly. That's really flavorful. That's no sauce on it. Anyhow, uh, the smoker did, it did what it's supposed to do, it smoked the meat. It did good. Uh, however, there's still some major problems, uh, corrections that Titan Great Outdoors needs to do with this, with this grill. Um, the paint already blistered up on the firebox, which is, which is, uh, it should actually hold up a lot longer than, than, you know, one cook using about, you know, temperatures of 300 degrees. I know the firebox is always a little bit hotter, but in this case, I mean, it should last, you know, more than one cook that, that, that paint should last. So anyhow, I think I covered everything. Uh, like, subscribe. I'll talk to you all next week. Ciao.